Hey there, do-it-yourselfers. I'm here working on my 2004 Toyota Tundra. Put some bigger wheels and tires on the uh, truck and it looks really good, but it has required some uh, more work to the front suspension. And I know there's a lot of videos out there about working on tie rods uh, and they're great, Chris Fix and others. And there's a lot of videos out there about working on coilovers and working on uh, ball joints and working on a -arm, upper a arms but what I'm going to do today is show you all some good tips and tricks for working on those because in the real world it's not quite as easy as it seems on video and you want to be prepared for those things so let's take a look okay first tip is get a half inch impact ratchet whether it's air whether it's uh, battery powered, either way, whatever works for you. This one's worked well overall. It's a rigid half inch um, octane. So, I mean, it's worked well for this assembly and you, you don't want to use it as much for reassembly because you got because you have torque settings, but it's worked well for disassembly except for uh, pressing the ball joints out you probably need something even bigger than this um, you know again air impact or uh, just a just a very large one I think Harbor Freight has an earthquake one believe it or not that thing works or something similar in you know Milwaukee DeWalt rigid whatever it is but it's got to be a big powerful one okay I've got the Tundra in various states of reassembly at this point as you can see, I've replaced the spindle, put it back on. I have uh, got my coilovers from Toy Tech. I have uh, my JBA upper A arm uh, in. Uh, that one's this one's not tight yet. I need to put some grease in and things. But you know, like I said, various states of reassembly. I also have my new lower ball joint. Put, put into place that's a Toyota part that's really the only one that, that works well for these first generation Tundras but let me tell you about the uh, tie rod end um, you know I, we tried the thing that you see on Chris Fix and others which is you take the castle nut and you turn it um, the, the opposite way and you put it on and then you and then you beat on it and you know what happened was I mean, we beat on it with the rubber mallet first, and that never did work, unfortunately. And it's not that this is rusted. I mean, you know, I've got very little, very little, if any, rust underneath here. I've kept this truck in as pristine as condition as possible, but um, it's not the rust. It was just, I mean, it's been on there a long time. It's a 2004 truck, so it's been on there since, and this is 2020, so there you go. You do the math. Uh, at least 16 if not uh, 17 depending on the build date so uh, then we tried this baby and uh, this thing eventually got it off uh, but it um, wallered out the threads and uh, will force us to put on a new uh, tie rod end which I mean that's not super expensive we can do that but um, you know it, it would have been nice if we could have gotten off now this uh, is a tool that you can find at your local auto parts store and online this thing works pretty well because you can put it uh, slip it underneath the boot on this end and it'll force it out so really should have started with this before I started beating on it with the mini sledge uh, and another thing you can use is the old pickle fork but if you use this uh, it's going to mess up the boot more likely than not and you're gonna have to get a new tie rod in Third thing is on these first gen Tundras, you got to be real careful with the brake caliper. I mean, it's a heavy beast and it's got this hard line coming off of it and going up into this bracket. I mean, you've got to make sure that all of these uh, brackets are loose on this hose. And it's got a hard line up here too. You can see right there, it's got a hard line there. So you want to be real careful with that so that, so that you don't mess up that hard line. You've got to have it uh, tied off. We've got a bungee on it. Um, I, mean, I mean, you can tie it off over on this side, or we had it tied off over on this side using some of the, the holes in the frame there. 
Uh, so, but you need to be real careful with that. Okay, another step when you're disassembling the uh, hub and the spindle to take it off to replace the upper A arm, uh, you have to be real careful with where is it? The dust boot or the dust dish or whatever you want to call this thing, dust cover. Uh, it's on there and it's pressed on there and. We dented it maybe just a little bit, yeah, you know, a little bit, but you, you have to take your time, use a real small screwdriver, and kind of poke in around it, uh, even maybe, well, use the rubber mallet, and, um, you know, like I say, take your time, go around, go around, go around, and eventually it'll come off. It does its job. I mean, uh, you can see how clean it is inside this hub, so, uh, but you don't want to mess it up. Uh, I suppose we could pick another one up somewhere, but um, it's easier just to take your time and reuse this one. You will need a press when you are taking the ball joint out of the spindle here. Um, this one, this ball joint on this JBA is different because it's pointing down. The, the factory stock one's pointing up. But regardless, you will need a press. If you don't have one, rent one from your auto parts store. Um, study up on how to use it and again you're going to need a, uh, a stout uh, half inch impact whether electric slash battery or um, air. Okay and these are the old coilovers factory except they had these spacers on it. Uh, I don't recommend relying upon rubber spacers uh, over time. They deflect and you're probably going to lose some height so I felt like it was time to get rid of those things anyways. Uh, good thing about the factory coilovers though is that they've got these plates with these studs on them. Uh, on the Toy Tech it had um, just holes in the top hat I believe they call it and, and you had to run the bolts in through the uh, top of the frame into the coilover top hat and the problem was I mean the bolts that they supplied were okay if you didn't have a spacer but on the driver's side of these Toyota Tundras Toy Tech spell or <laughs> spells sells a spacer that is a thin uh, aluminum spacer about a quarter of an inch maybe maybe almost a half inch but um, you know and that is to correct the driver's side lean well here's the problem when you're putting that spacer in along with the toy tech lift the bolts they supply are not long enough so we had to end up stripped a little bit of the threads on a couple of them but we're able to pick up some um, of the same type of bolts from our local hardware store and uh, put those in and tighten them down properly. But that's an important um, issue to And mention. another issue on the driver's side of uh, first gen Toyota Tundras or this long bolt on the upper A-arm. When you are removing that thing and the bolt will come out toward, toward the rear of the vehicle, uh, when you're removing it on the driver's side, what happens is you come back and you come back and you're your bolt's going to actually hit these hard fuel lines. And what you're going to have to do there is, and I haven't seen anybody else talk about this, is you're going to have to loosen the bracket uh, here. Uh, it's either a 10 or a 12 millimeter bolt on there. And uh, I, you, I mean, you don't want to have to remove all this stuff, obviously, because that would be a, a pain. But, it, but you have to uh, remove the bolt on this bracket to give it some play so that you can wiggle uh, the long A-arm bolt out. Another tip, need a 35 millimeter impact uh, deep well for the axle nut. We've already put the dust boot back on. A 36 will work in a pinch, but uh, make it a 6.36, uh, but you're still taking a chance on boogering the nut, so 35 fits exactly. Just a quick shot of the finished product. Put everything in and secured. New tie rod ends. 
lower ball joints. Coil overs and the upper A arms. Now it's off to the alignment shop.